Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. It's of a patient who attended a few days ago and they had been previously treated by uh, another company on the high street unsuccessfully. Um, they were unable to remove this dead skin from the patient's ear. This dead skin was causing not only hearing loss but uh, itchiness and irritation. You wouldn't really say that the skin is occluding the ear canal, it's just coating the surface of the ear canal. And the skin is slightly infected, you can tell by the colour. Uh, they had been using a few drops the day before. Um, and because there's some dead skin coating the eardrum, it, it was also causing some hearing loss. So the eardrum wasn't as mobile as it normally would be with this dead skin there. Now this patient has got a very narrow ear canal entrance and the cartilage is quite thick. So we've had to stretch the ear open. Um, we do that by pulling the patient's pinna back on up. So the pinna is the external cartilage. Uh, so the satellite dish of your ear, I elevate that back on up to straighten and widen the ear canal. I then insert the endoscope, as you can see, and the endoscope acts almost like a door stop, which then opens up the ear. So I can just about there, you can see, insert my, um, I'm using a fine end at the moment. Previously I was using a full zonal suction probe. So this skin, <coughs> we sort of removed the posterior layer of dead skin. We're now on the anterior canal wall. And in a moment, you'll see me approach the eardrum very delicately to remove it off the eardrum. Because the patient has got a slight ear infection, um, the skin is slightly infected. There's a lot of humidity in the ear. And you may have noticed when I insert the eye clearscope endoscope into the ear, at first, there's a bit of condensation, a bit of fogging. However, that dissipates almost immediately after I put the suction probe in. If I just left the endoscope in there for a few more seconds, it would have naturally just dissipated. That's one of the benefits of an endoscope. So the endoscope itself, the rod lens system. So you think about an endoscope like a telescope. You've got a series of lenses, rod lenses, um, sequentially uh, adjacent to each other, which um, gives you the image. And then coating these rod lenses are a series of uh, fibre optics, and bundles of fibre optics. And this transfers light into the ear and it also helps bring the image back and the fiber optics because they coat the entire length of the rod lens system of an endoscope they add a bit of a slight bit of heat and this heat <coughs> then helps prevent fogging so fogging happens when you've got moisture humidity in an, uh, in this case an ear and it naturally condenses against the, the coldest surface so because the ear temperature is higher than the temperature of the lens of the endoscope you get fogging on the, the lens of the endoscope. Uh, but with, with an endoscope, after a few seconds, the fiber optics, uh, because they are sending light across the fiber optics, there's a slight bit of heat there, which helps um, evaporate um, the fogging. So we're just on the eardrum here. You can see this crusty layer of dead skin. Uh, we're just slowly peeling it off. You need a really, really steady hand here. We don't want to be causing any injury or making any contact with the bony part of the ear canal or the patient's eardrum. So you can see three quarters of the patient's eardrum. It's just the, the superior anterior quadrant. And slowly but surely, I managed to peel that off as well. And once you've, at the end of this procedure, I'll, I'm going to, again, show you the pre-examination video so you can just compare what it was like before and after. Um, some people say, why wouldn't you just flush it out with water? Irrigation in the UK or syringing, as it's previously known, it's no longer um, used um, as much in the UK. So I saw some clinics still do, but irrigation has inherent risks. It's not to say it's going to cause every single person that undergoes a treatment an ear infection but one of the biggest risks of ear irrigation or syringing is developing an ear infection because water if you've been watching my videos i'm trying to educate the viewers just to look promote your own ear health do not get water in your ear i have uh, said it a few times uh, and i will continue saying it it's more for your own benefit um, because water is really really bad for the ears guys just say we've got 100 people and every one of those 100 people get water in there regularly. The majority of these people will be fine, um, but just say 5% of those people will then develop swimmers here. And it, you can't just, you can't predict which five of those 100 will develop swimmers here. And once you've got swimmers here, it can cause 
no end to problems. You can get stenosis and narrowing of the ear canal, chronic ear infections, and even with constant and regular use of antibiotics or antiviral or antifungal treatment in the ear, it's, it can be hard to shift. So just don't risk it. Water can cause an infection in the ear. It's called swimmer's ear. It kind of washes away the acidity as well. So the acidity helps to um, keep uh, or inhibit, should I say, bacterial growth in the ear. Um, so irrigation, yes, that, and that's not going to peel skin. The skin's embedded. We do have to go through the, the mechanical motion of peeling. Um, skin is just going to flush water. If it's excessive amount <coughs> of pressure, uh, when you syringe or irrigate it, you, you run the risk of perforating the eardrum. Some patients have a, a perforation already or grommets or a ventilation tube or a T-tube. Therefore, you can't use um, irrigation or syringing in those circumstances because the water can enter the middle ear through the grommet or perforation, um, which then can cause a, uh, quite a severe middle ear infection. It can lead to meningitis or brain abscess. So it, worst case scenario is it can be life-threatening if you get <coughs> middle ear infection. And it's not treated. So many, many people get ear infections in the middle ear. So, But there has been instances where it has got quite serious. So just, just don't take the risk, guys. So if you go swimming regularly, you when you shower just avoid water in your ear so ways you can um, avoid water in your ear you can simply just get up some cotton wool and some vaseline and create a little plug at the entrance don't push the cotton wool in too deep because you're going, you're going to have to remove this cotton wool and if you do have a bit of wax you may push it further in you can get custom swim swim molds so a cast is taken of your ear and a silicon mold a, a hyperallergenic material um, is used to do that um, you can get over the counter swim plugs as well, so foam inserts and um, silicon inserts. There's also some sprays out there um, in the UK. We've got something called Earol Swim, so it's a combination of olive oil, which is hydrophobic, so it pr provides a, a waterproof coating of the ear canal. So this is the pre examination, pre procedure video, should I say? And again, I'm going to play you the post procedure video so you can just make a comparison so yeah so this ear roll um swim and it also can say tea tree so tea tree has some mi uh, micro antimicrobial properties so if you do get some bacteria that's left behind in your ear following um, uh, swimming or bathing or showering the tea tree can help kill that bacteria or inhibit its growth um, you can get a, a swim headband as well so these headbands they're not as effective, I don't think, but um, you, they're just wrap around, well, not as effective as a swim mould. They're going to be more effective than the ear roll swim because obviously that you still are allowing water in. A he swim headband, it's like a headband that goes over your ears trying to stop water entering. So that's not going to be as effective as a custom made swim mould, for example, but um, it's better than nothing. So do take good care of your ears. Um, never put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear, guys. That's something else I always preach to my patients. So don't poke in your ears, basically. Nothing smaller than your elbow in your ear. It's an old granny's um, tail. Um, don't get water in there. Um, if you want, you can use some kind of um, olive oil spray, I recommend. But olive oil spray, that's meant for the ear, guys. Not home olive oil. You, you can sometimes develop an infection with that because it's not completely... Um, sterilized or refined for safe use in the ear so you get the stuff over the counter that's meant for um, your ear um, i hope you enjoyed that video guys sorry for going on a bit i just wanted to give you some good pointers and tips for ear health um, so yeah i think i've mentioned it but i'm going to say it again new q tips um, no cotton buds guys please 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 don't um, if you trim the hairs uh, on your tragus or um, concha bowl so basically any hairs on the outer part of your ear I know some people like trimming them especially men like myself um, when we reach a certain age that's fine but just put a bit of cotton wool just at the entrance just to seal the entrance not too deep in just to block the, the entrance and then trim so you avoid these hairs going into your ear these hairs can cause a matting of earwax so it prevents the natural migration I better stop now because um I think we've been talking, um, the videos were finished a while ago. Have a great evening and weekend, guys. Take care. Bye.